now this is one good question from iit jam 2016 paper and this is a compound given to us okay alpha beta unsaturated ketone and uh, to this we are adding a uh, grignard reagent that is memgbr followed followed by addition of copper iodide yeah the solvent is given as ether then uh, we are adding methyl iodide to it and we get some compound x and to this we add this reagent called mcpba this is nothing but meta chloro peroxybenzoic acid okay and then we get get y okay so what we need to do is we need to find out x and y x and y are the major products now these are the options given okay and uh, this is quite a uh, like this 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 question has a uh, lot of concepts that are involved in it okay and uh, i'll also be uh, like first of all i'll solve the question obviously but i'll also give you the alternatives for example if say option number a is the answer then why is it not b c or d or when can we have option number options number b c d as the answer because such questions are repeated and what what i tell you is that you should practice previous year questions because uh, previous year questions uh, are not repeated as such but the pattern is kind of same so the questions will be based on such pattern so if we if they have added some extra thing you know in the next next year's paper they can remove that extra part or they can add something new to it so you should always know uh, when changing what will lead to what kind of a product okay so let's come on to the question first of all you know that memgbr memgbr now magnesium is quite electropositive in nature okay and so this bond between memgbr is quite polar because mg is like i said very is highly electropositive okay and if there are reagents where copper is attached okay so there are reagents called uh, where copper is attached now copper is in fact very um, you can say uh, it's less electropositive than the uh, magnesium it's less electropositive less electropositive than magnesium so what happens is the polarity between this methyl uh, this carbon and copper bond is less as compared to the polarity between this carbon and this magnesium okay so now what what does polarity lead to is if the polarity between these two bonds is very high then the carbon ion generated over here is it acts as a very strong nucleophile and it undergoes one to addition that is if the nucleophile is generated this nucleophile will attack this particular position so this is called a one to addition so you can just write it as one two three and four okay so if the a nucleophile is attack attacking at the second position then it's called a one to addition okay and the reason like i told you if it's a strong nucleophile and since the polarity of mag magnesium and the carbon bond is quite high so it is uh, a it acts as a strong nucleophile whereas if we have a carbon attached to a copper and since copper is less electropositive so th the polarity difference between this bond is quite low and when the polarity difference is low then it will give one for addition that is then the nucleophile will attack this fourth position so this is the difference you need to know so if if you have a reagent where there if you have a reagent organometallic reagent where our carbon is attached to a copper reagent then always remember there will be a one for addition and if it's a, a magnesium group uh, attached to a methyl or a lithium for example lithium is also quite electropositive then there will always be one to addition okay but in this case what is happening is for example if there was only memgbr then what would happen this this carbon M, then me minus will be generated and me minus will go and attack this particular uh, carbon center which is electrophilic in nature okay and because of which what we'll get is this methyl group will get attached on this particular position but here we have copper iodide now what copper iodide does is the mechanism is called quite complex i would not uh, get into the mechanism but what happens is because of the presence of catalytic amount of copper iodide a transient uh, you can say a transient state is formed a transient state means a intermediate is formed where our methyl is actually attached to the copper so there is certain reaction that happens because of which the methyl in the transient state is attached to the copper and because of that it undergoes one four addition and not one two addition okay so remember this 
if it was grignard reagent alone then it would lead to one to addition and if it if, if it had led to one to addition then what would have what would have happened is we would have got this compound i am talking about one to addition okay if you had only grignard reagent that is so then we would have uh, o minus and we would have methyl group attached like this okay and then this o minus can then further now we have added methyl iodide so this mei uh, this uh, this o minus can further attack this methyl and iodine can leave and we'll get this compound compound number a as the answer or we can get compound number b as the answer okay because in both both these cases this this is going to happen so had there been only grignard reagent then the option then x could have been from option number a or b but since we are like i told you a catalytic amount of copper iodide is added because of which a transient state is formed which where the uh, methyl where the carbon is attached to the copper uh, group because of which one for addition take place so we can cancel out these two options okay now we are left with c and d so now let's come on to what actually happens now you also need to remember one more thing that this uh, this reagent that is grignard reagent is actually added at very low temperatures because it's actually uh, quite vol volatile so whenever you know compounds like but butyl lithium or uh, memgbr or such reagents are given they uh, these reactions always take place at quite low temperatures so just remember that okay okay so now we'll have one for addition that is this methyl group uh, will attack over here like that so we had a methyl over here as well so we had a methyl so we'll have two methyl groups so we'll get something like this so this when this attack uh, attack of the nucleophile takes place this bond goes like that and we have a double bond o a negative charge on this carbon and we have two methyl groups attached okay now what uh, now we can draw a resonating structure the resonating structure would like look something like this right this is the resonating structure that exists now <clears throat> now the point where i told you that these reactions take place at low temperature this is where it matters so had there been uh, for example a reaction now i'll tell you so the originally the negative charge is generated on this carbon and then it can uh, undergo resonance and we can have this structure as well so the, the, this is where the concept of kinetic and thermodynamic stability comes uh, to play so if if a temp, if a reaction is taking place at low temperature then we say the kinetic the product with uh, the, with kinetic stability will be formed okay and at high temperatures the product which is thermodynamically more favorable thermodynamically not stable favorable kinetically favorable and thermodynamically favorable okay so at high temperature so since i told you these reactions take place at low temperature so the kinetic product will be formed and this this is thermodynamic thermodynamically more stable and this is kinetically more stable so when we are adding this methyl iodide ch3i so if the kinetic product is formed then the negative charge over here uh, this carbon ion will attack this particular uh, carbon and will have this leaving group uh, removed but if thermodynamically more uh, if if the temperature is higher then the thermodynamic thermodynamic product will be formed and we'll have this oxygen attacking this carbon but these reactions always take place at low temperature so you should remember that whenever you are adding grignard reagent or uh, organometallic species basically always go for the kinetic product okay so what we are going to have have is so this is what we are going to get okay let's shift our focus to this particular reagent mcpba what exactly it is it is nothing but meta chloro peroxy benzoic acid and what does it look like so we have chloro meta chloro benzoic acid so this is our meta chloro peroxy benzoic acid okay so you can just say it's nothing but a peroxy acid now you must uh, have studied this reaction i am pretty sure you must have studied this reaction a reaction called as bare willeger 
oxidation you must have studied this reaction where if a ketone is given to us and we add a peroxy acid what we get is an ester and if we have a cyclic ketone then what we get is a lactone so what is what exactly is a lactone don't get confused these are just uh normal chemistry terms you just you should just remember what is a lactone so if we have this kind of ketone and to this we add a peroxy acid then lactone is nothing but we'll get a six membered ring okay and this particular group is called a lactone c double bond o o like that okay this is a lactone and uh, ester you know i think ester you should know what exactly is ester so if it's a cyclic ketone it leads to the formation of uh, lactone and if there is a uh, aliphatic ketone then it leads to the formation of ester so this is basically bare weligar oxidation so even here bare weligar oxidation will take place but this is not enough you should also know the, know the mechanism of how it takes place because if you see uh, see the uh, options now if you look at the options we have uh, decided upon c and d but over here you can see that the pro products are different okay uh, just excuse my drawing this is a seven these both are seven membered rings so from a six membered we are getting a seven membered exactly what happens and we are getting a lactone but we are getting different kind of lactones over here we are getting this oxygen attached to this carbon which has a methyl group attached to it but over here we are getting this oxygen attached to a primary carbon okay so now we need to figure out which one of them is actually happening so, and for that we need to know the mechanism okay so the mechanism so this oxygen has lone pairs so this will abstract this acidic hydrogen hydrogen present over here so what we going to get is and we have a electrophilic center over here this carbon is electrophilic in nature so result res resultingly we'll get o negative this negative charge is going to attack this electrophilic carbon and this is what is going to happen so what we'll get is okay. and we have this oxygen oxygen c double bond o r we have methyl over here like this okay now this is where the actual mechanism happens and you need to be really confident about it and just pay attention it's pretty simple okay so now what happens is there's a concerted mechanism that takes place and i'll tell you what the mechanism is okay so th this is oh bond right this oh bond breaks and it goes like this okay then what happens is one of this one of these two bonds can break either this bond can break or this bo bond can break and when the one of the two bonds breaks they go and attach to this oxygen so let's say uh this bond breaks and this goes and atta atta attaches to this oxygen and this group leaves now this is a good leaving group rco minus right and uh, so now we need to figure out whether this bond breaks and this group migrates to this oxygen or whether this bond breaks and this group migrates to this oxygen this is what we need to figure out because in both the cases we are getting a different product okay so if you look closely this oxygen now what what i mean first of all by concerted mechanism is this all happens in a single step okay it does not happen there's no uh, intermediates uh, that are generated right this is one step reaction so what which one of these two carbons will attack this particular oxygen now if you see this oxygen is electron deficient because once this group leaves it will be left with only one bond okay so this is electron deficient in nature so if it's if if basically this group leaves then we'll have a negative charge on this oxygen right and a positive charge on this oxygen so it will be electron deficient in nature so we'll need a carbon which is electron rich in nature okay now out of these two carbons if you see i'll just label them one and two carbons you see that to the second carbon we have a methyl group attached okay now what this methyl group does is it has a inductive effect plus i effect and because of the plus i effect this carbon is rel relatively richer than this carbon uh, and it has more like 
richer by what i mean by richer is basically it has a higher electron density because of the inductive effect of this methyl that is attached to it so because of which this preferentially this carbon will uh, migrate to this oxygen because of it which what we are going to get is a seven membered ring okay oxygen we have a ketone like that and uh, one two three four five uh, we'll get something like this so one two three four five six seven so we got a seven membered ring with the oxygen right and we have a methyl group attached over here and two methyl groups like this okay so now if you look at the options the correct answer is option number c right because we are getting this oxygen attached to this particular so this group is basically migrating over here we have this particular group migrating okay so uh, sorry over here we have this particular group migrating because of which the carbon this carbon is attached to this oxygen but over here this group is migrating because of which we are having this particular secondary carbon attached to this oxygen so just remember the more the the more electron rich species gonna migrate okay this is very important now i would also want to tell you the main function of so this was a secondary function of actually of meta chloroperoxy benzoic acid the main function is it leads to the formation of epoxide which is happening in this case now i just want to tell you one thing because this is very important and this can come in later exams because here the use of meta chloroperoxy benzoic acid was for the formation of uh, for bare willegger oxidation basically oxidation was taking place but the primary pur purpose of this reagent is epoxidation okay so now this product meta chloroperoxy so this reagent meta chloroperoxy benzoic acid is quite bulky in nature like i drew the structure so it's quite bulky in nature so when it, when the epoxide epo epoxidation happens it will happen from a uh, plane which is sterically less hindered so had there been i'm just giving you a scenario had the options been from a and b and then we are adding meta chloroperoxy benzoic acid so this meta chloroperoxy benzoic acid when added to a alkene okay there should be a alkene present it leads to epoxidation and like i told you the epoxidation will take place from a plane which is le less sterically hindered so if you see the two options over here this methoxy group is above the plane and this epoxide formation is taking place from below the plane so this this is sterically favored over here if you see this methoxy group is above the plane and the epoxide formation is also taking place above the plane so this is not sterically fa favored this 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 kind of uh, product will be sterically uh, not favored and this would lead to unstable product so this will not form instead if we are adding meta chloroperoxy benzoic acid to this kind of uh, uh, reactant then we'll get this product because this is sterically less hindered okay